Hey, good morning, boys and girls. I hope your Sunday is awesome so far, and I'm excited that we get another chance to worship Jesus together. As we start our morning, let's pray, and then we'll sing a song about trusting and obeying God with Miss Nicole. Dear God, thank you so much that we get to listen to your word this morning. Open our eyes, ears, hearts, and mind so that we can see, hear, know, and understand you better. We love you and thank you so much for how amazing you are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let's sing with Miss Nicole. Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, we are going to sing Trust and Obey because Mr. Ethan's lesson is going to be talking about trusting Jesus. We're going to sing the first, second, and last verse of this hymn, there's a lot of verses to it, so I just picked a few for us to sing. Um, if you know it, sing along, and if you don't, just listen and maybe hum the melodies. I'm going to get begin with a little uh, intro. Wow, Miss Nicole, thank you for that great song. That was awesome. Now let's continue to learn about God together. I have a ball here, and I bet you've been playing with a ball while you have been at home. And if your ball gets flat, you got to put air back in it. Well, how do you do that? Let's look. I have an air pump here that I could use. I also have a drill bit. Which one should I use? Well, um... They're different sizes. I don't really know. Uh, look at this. This is the hole you put the air in. And look, there's a, a tip here and a tip here that are both pointy and small. I, I bet they could both fit in that hole. Which one should I use? Well, the purpose of a drill bit is to drill holes. And the purpose of an air pump, well, it's to pump air, isn't it? So which one do you think I should use to fill the ball with air? I should use the air pump, shouldn't I? That's its purpose. The purpose of the drill bit is to make holes, and if I put it in the ball, the ball would get a hole, and instead of having air on the inside, it would have air on the outside, wouldn't it? And then I couldn't use it anymore. You know what this ball teaches us? 
It teaches us that everything has a purpose. The purpose of this air pump is to put air in the ball. And if I use it to put air in the ball, then good things happen. Now, the purpose of this drill bit is to drill holes. So if I use the drill bit to try to put air in the ball and I go against its purpose, then bad things are going to happen. And you know what that teaches us? Everything has a purpose. When you use something for its purpose, that's a good thing. But when you use something in a way that doesn't match its purpose, well, bad stuff's always going to happen, isn't it? And that is a really important lesson for us to learn. Because boys and girls, God made you with a purpose. The whole Bible is one story where he tells us about himself. He lets us know how amazing he is. He also tells us about you and me. And he lets us know that he made this world so, so good. He made you and me to show the world that he's awesome, to help him rule it by being princes and princesses who have gifts and talents, and who use those gifts and talents to show the world how great he is. If you are an artist, you're supposed to show the world that God's creative. If you're good at sports, you're supposed to show the world how strong and competitive God is. No matter what your skill set is, you can show the world how cool God is. That's your purpose. Your purpose is to show the world how awesome God is. The Bible calls it glorifying him or worshiping him, celebrating him, obeying him with your whole life. That's your purpose, just like the purpose of this air pump is to put air in the ball. But when we disobey God, we go against him. When we try to say, I want the world to know I'm awesome instead of you, that's going against our purpose. And that's kind of like taking this drill bit and putting it in the ball. It's not going to work. Anytime you and I go against God and we disobey what the Bible calls sin, it always ends bad, ultimately in dying. Not just that our heart stops beating, but that forever we're apart from God. And the Bible, which is God's word to us, is so awesome because God tells us about himself, he tells us about us, and he tells us that he has a plan to make our relationship with him whole again, even though our disobedience has made it impossible, even though our disobedience has separated us from him. You see, the Bible, his word, tells us about himself and his plan to make our relationship with him right again. Because the Bible is the word of the creator of the universe to us, we read it and talk about it every week. Nothing is more important than God and his word. And what we want to do today is we want to look at the book of Nehemiah. A couple weeks ago, we talked about Nehemiah rebuilding the walls of the city of Jerusalem. And today we're going to learn about Nehemiah talking to the people of Israel, God's people. You see, Nehemiah comes at the end of the Old Testament. Remember, the Old Testament is the first part of the Bible. The part where God tells us who he is, tells us the problem of our disobedience, and says, hey, I'm going to send a Savior who's going to fix the problem. And the New Testament, part two, which we'll start lessons on here in just a couple weeks, is, a part, is, about, is the part where the Savior Jesus comes. We meet him and we get to see who he is and what he does. And we're going to summarize the whole story of the Old Testament today. The whole story is about our purpose. Remember, boys and girls, your purpose is to glorify God. Your purpose is to show the world how awesome he is. In fact, what I want you to learn from our Bible story today is that you need to stop disobeying God and start trusting in him because that is what you were created for. Nehemiah reminds the people of Israel that that's what they're created for. And he summarizes or tells them the story of the beginning of creation all the way to where they were today. The whole Old Testament, all of the stories that you think about to remind them of their purpose, though they all need to stop disobeying God and start trusting in him. Our Bible story today comes from Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17. That's the address of the story. Just like your house has an address, you can find every story in the Bible with its address, the name of the book, the chapter, and the verse. We're in Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17. And the first part of chapter 9 is Nehemiah talking about the different stories of all of the Old Testament. In fact, I have my Lego bricks right here. Nehemiah didn't have Legos, but he was thinking along the same lines that you and I do. Each story in the Old Testament 
is awesome. But it's not meant to be all alone by itself. They're all meant to come together to make one story that leads us to Jesus. Just like Legos are cool on their own, but they're meant to be together and show us who Jesus is. Now, we start out with Nehemiah. And in Nehemiah chapter 9, he reminds us that God is the maker of the heaven and the earth. In verse 5, he says, Blessed is your great name, God, because you are alone, God. You created the heavens, the highest heavens, and all their stars, and everything that's on them and on the earth. You gave life to it all. God is the creator of heaven and earth. And when we go along in the rest of the Old Testament, Nehemiah continues to remind the people of Israel of all of the stories, how God saved humanity through Noah, how God promised Abraham that the Savior of the world was going to come from his family, who became the people of Israel, how Moses was the guy God used to bring the people out of Israel and into the land he said they could live in, how they had kings like Saul and David who led them living in the land. But the people disobeyed God, so God sent prophets who were men with messages that said, stop disobeying God, start trusting in him. Your purpose is to show the world how awesome he is. It's not to say, I'm the boss. And they didn't listen. And the kings who were supposed to lead the people to obey God, man, they didn't. And they got kicked out of their land. And they came back to their land after 70 years Nehemiah came back, and he helped rebuild the walls of the city of Jerusalem that got broke down. And that's where we are in our story now, at the very end of the Old Testament. And one of the things that Nehemiah says is he says, look, God is awesome, and he created us. And then every time he's so good and so kind to us, we keep disobeying, and he keeps being good. Nehemiah, verse 917, summarizes all of this by saying, about God. It says, God, you're a forgiving God. You're gracious and compassionate. You're slow to anger and abounding in faithful love. You don't abandon your people. You see, boys and girls, that's the, the summary of the whole Bible and definitely the Old Testament. God is faithful. God is good. God is awesome. He made this whole world full of good things like sunshine and candy. And we disobeyed him and we broke our relationship with him because instead of listening to him being the boss and using the good skills that he's given us, like being a musician or a cook, to show the world how awesome he is, we decided, I want to be the boss. I want people to celebrate me. And that broke our relationship with him. You see, boys and girls, you were created to show the world how awesome God is. You weren't created to try to make everything about yourself. Like, take, for example, these popsicle sticks. Now, you can use popsicle sticks for all kinds of things, can't you? Making crafts, making popsicles. And you guys are kind of like all these popsicle sticks. Whoops, I dropped some. But you guys are like all of these popsicle sticks. How you can do so many great things. Now, when they're together like this, held together by a piece of paper, they stay together, unless you drop them like I just did. But guess what? If I use one of the popsicle sticks and I say, you know what? I don't want the paper to hold the popsicle sticks together. I want the popsicle stick to hold itself together. Watch what happens when I try to bend the popsicle stick around all the other popsicles. Whoop! It breaks. Why did it break? It broke because a popsicle stick isn't created to bend around other popsicle sticks. And boys and girls, we are like a popsicle stick that breaks when we try to do things our way when we don't listen to God. And I don't want you to live your whole life trying to make your life about you. I don't want you to use the good skills God's given you to try to get other people to focus on you. That's not what you're created for. Stop disobeying God by being selfish and being mean and all the other ways you disobey and start trusting in him and, and listen to him because that's what you're created for. Now, there's really good news. You see, the good news is that even though we've all disobeyed God and broken our relationship with him, God promised to send a savior. Did you hear what Nehemiah said right here in the word? He said that God is forgiving. He's slow to anger. 
He's compassionate. He wants to forgive us. And he made that possible by sending the Savior of the world. We're going to start to learn about Jesus coming and what that means here in just a few weeks. But we know that Jesus, he's the Savior of the whole world. We have one God who exists as three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And God the Father sent God the Son, Jesus, who lived in this world. And unlike Israel and you and me, who disobeyed God at every turn, Jesus was always obedient to God the Father. He didn't deserve to die like you and I do for disobeying, but he did die in our place on the cross. And like we celebrated last week at Easter, he came back to life, and today he's still alive. And if we trust in him, we can be forgiven of our disobedience and have a good relationship with God again. That is good news. So boys and girls, have you trusted in Jesus? Because if you haven't, what are you waiting for? The purpose of your life is to show this world how awesome God is. And the first step in showing the world how awesome God is, is to listen to him. Stop disobeying and start trusting in him by asking Jesus to forgive you for all of your disobedience. He will when you ask. That's what 1 John 1, 9 says. Now, boys and girls, we also remember that trusting in Jesus isn't something you do just one time. It's something we do every single day. Because God has forgiven us, we can forgive other people and love them. So here's what I want you to remember. Stop disobeying God. Start trusting in him. Now, if you've never trusted in Jesus, I want you to know that the purpose of your life is to do that. So trust in him today. If you have, scratch your head with me. I want you to ask yourself, hmm, what can I do to keep following him? Well, great question. Did you see here how in our Bible verse, it says that God is a forgiving God? Well, did you know that we can follow God's example and we can be forgiving of other people? That's one way we can follow him every day. God is so good that he saves us through Jesus. He makes our relationship with him right again for free. And we stay in a good relationship with him forever because of Jesus, if we trust in him. So we don't have to earn God's love. Or we don't have to earn staying in a good relationship with God. It's a good free gift from him. But we do have the privilege of getting to follow God every day. And if you've already trusted in Jesus, the purpose of your life is to follow God every day. One way you can do that is to be forgiving the way that God has forgiven you. You've been at home a lot, haven't you? And I bet that by now, you have probably had one of your siblings get on your nerves. Maybe they broke a Lego creation you were making or stole the last brownie that your mom made. And you have one of two options when someone does something wrong to you. You could be mean back to them, or you could act like God and say, hey, I'm not going to hold that over your head. I'm not going to be mean back. I'm here, and I'm ready to make our relationship right again. Boys and girls, I want you to follow God's example and not be mean back to people when they're mean to you. Not be mean to your siblings when they're mean to you, but be ready to make the relationship right again. Following God's example. And that is one way that if you already trust in Jesus, you can follow him. And another way you can follow him is that you can know he gave you great gifts. Maybe you're a musician like Miss Nicole. Maybe you can cook, maybe you can dance, maybe you can play sports. Do those things, not so that people will look at you and say, wow, you're great, but do them so that people will listen to your music and say, God is creative. Or eat your food and say, wow, God makes things taste real good. How awesome is his creation? Boys and girls, stop disobeying God. Start trusting in him. And remember that making him look awesome. That's what you were created for. And here's the thing. God is so good that when you spend your life saying, man, God, I want you to be awesome. That's a good life. But when you try to do things your own way, you snap in half like that popsicle stick. Life never goes well. So stop trusting in yourself. Stop disobeying God and start trusting in him. Nehemiah ends the whole Old Testament and reminds us that every story we've learned about so far, Noah and the Ark, Moses, Joseph, David and Goliath, all of those stories, Daniel and the lion's den, 
They all teach us that God is perfect and good. We've disobeyed him, but he is sending a savior named Jesus to die and come back to life so that we can be forgiven. Boys and girls, do you trust Jesus? I hope so. Let's trust in him and follow him together today. Bye.